The problem we have is we've got a, not a dilemma, we've got a trilemma, is everything is going in opposite directions. We want more power, 5G, 6G, more kilowatts on site, we want to go to net zero, and we need more towers, now we need more density. So it's, it's all going in not the same direction, which is not what you want. So these guys, the Energy Council, every year measure that elastic band that's being stretched in the wrong direction. And you can see you've got this energy equity, you know, how much power can we give to everybody in a fair way, doing okay, environmental sustainability, not as good, but still doing okay, but still only 66%. The worst bit <clears throat> is energy security. And this was done before all the crap that's happening in Europe and around the planet. So this has got to be worse now, today. We had load shedding last night at dinner. It's going to happen in the UK, in Ireland, in Europe, in the next 100 days, guaranteed. So, why did I mention this? A show of hands, everybody in the room, hands up who got on an airplane this week. Okay, my second question was, if somebody was lying and didn't get on a plane, did you have a hot drink this morning? Okay. So I can guarantee you, you all benefited from a technology to get you here or to get your coffee, and that is a gas turbine. Gas turbines are the things that are on wings on planes, and gas turbines are the things that make the electricity for the grid. It all involves boiling water. At the end of the day, whether it's nuclear or gas or coal, you're boiling water. So why am I saying that? Well, Bladen, like a turbine, has taken all that technology that's been running for 60 years on planes, non-stop for billions of hours, and shrunk it into this. So the stuff that you see on planes and in power stations is basically the same stuff that we've shrunk into this most power-dense engine on the planet. So this shiny bit gives you 12 kilowatts of fuel agnostic, zero maintenance power for 40,000 hours before you have to do anything to it. Okay? For this engine, you do not touch, you do not service, you do not overhaul, and over 20 years we've built a company and spent 100 million dollars, pounds, euros, pick the currency because it's all the same now, um, to build to build uh, hundreds of sites in telecom sites. We, we first deployed in South Africa four years ago uh, with our partner here, and since then we've steadily moved up the continent and across four other continents now. But before I talk about where we are and what we've done, is we've packaged up this into um, a kit that takes up less than two square meters of space on a telecom site. And we can do it in a way that allows you to keep one hand on dirty old diesel, but also give you a way to embrace other types of fuels without changing anything in the engine. Because at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're using fuel that has calories in it and using those calories to drive this turbine really, really fast at up to speeds of 130,000 RPM. That's right, I said 130,000 RPM. That gives us the heat necessary to generate electricity on site. And we're doing this today using multiple fuels, biofuels, mixing fuels to reduce fuel theft, reducing vandalism because turning this to cash is hard compared to regular generators. There's no big battery banks in there. There's, uh, most of the sites in South Africa, we actually pre-mix the fuel with uh, paraffin, which is almost half the price of diesel uh, in South Africa. So not only can you get your cake and eat it, but you don't have to pay a premium to run it once you have this in the ground. So our partner uh, here calls this a, a lock it and leave it product. He basically installs it, forgets about it. How we, how we progress this technology is that we are, we've partnered with a company in the UK where we're um, embracing new low 
no carbon fuels, including hydrogen. So this, because it's a gas turbine, all it wants is gas. It doesn't care where it gets this gas from. If it's from hydrogen, biogas, methane, ammonia derived, derived hydrogen, it doesn't care. So all we do is we have a fuel system that plunks onto that and we're good to go. Big problem is, and why Tarakos is still buying hundreds of millions of liters of uh, diesel every year is, it's great if you're in you know, a privileged market to have access to those fuels, but you can't have that now. So the problem that people have is getting that inertia to move out what they're used to and going into the new stuff because you want to have one foot in the old school, that reliability, that availability, and embrace more sustainable ways of delivering power. 100% renewable energy never, never equals 100% availability. And that's the problem. In Telco land, we want our 99.999 as well as 99 or 100% renewable. It's not the, can't do it, sorry for the bad news <laughs> sharing. But this way, today, with this, there is uh, fuels that exist in certain markets that are uh, biofuels that are derived from waste vegetable oil that have the same energy, so the same calorie content as diesel. You can put that in this machine today and reduce your carbon footprint by 90%, 90, compared to diesel. So today, we can take you 90% of the way there now and when the world gets its act together and can deliver high quality, decent quality, high uh, percentage biofuel and, hit, and uh, hydrogen, you're already there. You just have to take one more step to embrace that last 10% without completely drastic, you know, drastically changing your supply chain or changing the way you do business already just to get power to site. So, Together with um, some strategic partners like uh, Jubaili Brothers and Rise Energy, that we can actually marry this with solar and wind. So, although majority of the hundreds of sites that we're on around the world now can't see, America is there for some reason. This light's too bright. Um, yeah, we started life four years ago in South Africa, and since then we've moved north and sideways into other telecom sites. So we've run over a million hours on this. We have sites that have been running for 20,000 hours, and they've, we've only serviced the site twice. Two services, 20,000 hours. So that eliminates driving to site. And one customer says that for every 100 sites, you need, if you're using diesel generators, you might need eight guys, four trucks. With this, you need one truck, two guys and you eliminate, um, say in a big country like South Africa or Egypt or Nigeria, you eliminate half a million kilometers of pickup driving. That's diesel as well. So you take that out of the equation. Oh, did I mention this doesn't use oil? No liquid oil or lubricant in this engine. It uses air as a lubricant. So we actually have these cool air bearings inside this sealed engine. So when this rotating one part is moving at 100,000 RPM, it's in an envelope of air, like a plasma. There's no oil filter, no oil to change, there's no oil to buy, there's no oil to dispose of, so it's another headache. Ticket. I'm sure I'm in five minute zone now. So just to, to summarize, we're reducing the headaches that people have about moving away or moving, detaching from diesel by uh, giving you a progressive way, taking baby steps to your net zero without completely changing your supply chain and uh, environment that you're used to. Um, so take those baby measurable steps and getting to your sustainable goals without spending a gazillion dollars doing it. Thank you.